speaking, so I've had to wipe this down. But according to some Amazon reviews, I'm not much good as a writer either. So, uh, <laughs> this is going to be painful. Um, not long after me and Rosie first met, I was telling her a story about me making a joke to someone I was working with on a security job. And I couldn't understand why they took offence to it rather than find it funny. Um, I can't remember the joke, um, but at the time I thought it was highly amusing. When I told Rosie the joke, she just looked at me very unimpressed and said, Yeah, I got it, but you're just not funny, are you? <laughs> <laughs> so it's become a running joke since then that Rosie does not think I'm remotely funny. Um, I was talking to her a few days ago about writing this speech, and her exact words to me were, you're not bad at writing when you want to, just don't try and be funny and it should be okay. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what the tradition is, whether it's me that's supposed to say something about the bridesmaids looking beautiful. Jason, you've done this twice now, you should know, is it me or you? Ouch. All joking aside, um, I'll please say thank you to my sisters for helping out so much with our teams and for Rosie and getting ready and everything today. And my favourite niece, Lulu, for a different reason. The most important thank you I need to make, really, is to Rosie for being here. You've had nearly a year to change your mind and back out. You must be stuck in punishment. Um, I honestly still sometimes have to pinch myself to make sure this is really happening. I feel like the luckiest man alive to be with such an amazing woman that I can now call my wife. From the moment we got together, I feel like we've worked so well as a team, constantly pushing each other to better ourselves and achieve more in life. Every success we've both had in the last two years is purely down to us helping each other every step of the way. One of the things that I love most about Rosie is her ability to adapt and overcome when life throws the challenges her way. When we first got together, I remember one night it came apparent that we didn't own a potato masher. <laughs> and the meal we ate that night was sausage with whisked potato and peas. genius. I wasn't going to believe it, but it did work. <laughs> it amazes me that I managed to survive this long without Rosie by my side. So many things I've been doing wrong my entire life, like eating, drinking, breathing, sleeping, <laughs> even you wrong. Thankfully, she came along in the, and put all them right sometimes. Uh, this is the bit where I'm going to try and find. Uh, no chance. Some, <laughs> some of you won't know, so I've written a little story of how me and Rosie got together and up to this point. Uh, I was 40 years old and beginning to think that I would never find true happiness. And then one night at a dance lesson on a warm summer night in Broadcast, Rosie walked in and lit up the entire room. I was blown away by her amazing smile and natural beauty from the first moment I looked at her. I've never believed in love at first sight, but when we first danced together, I felt an energy from Rosie that I can't explain. I said to myself, look, if you had one shot, one opportunity, to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment, would you capture it, or just let it slip? Spoiler alert, Rosie is here, so I must have captured the moment. <laughs> We danced together and I took my shot, asking her to compete with me. She wasn't sure at first and had to think about it, but reluctantly agreed to compete at a competition that was taking place a few weeks later. This was a good excuse for me to suggest meeting up again very soon after so we could practice for the tournament, for the competition. So I asked her if we would meet up a few days later to go for another dance lesson. But I secretly incorporated this lesson into a date. I'm not sure Rosie thought it was a date, but I did. <laughs> Stood waiting for her to turn up, my palms were sweaty, knees weak, arms were heavy. There was no mum spaghetti, not in dancing at the Ken Center to get us ready. She drove past me into the car park, and all I could think when I first saw her was, oh no, she tries to know me. <laughs> So now back to reality, oh, it goes gravity, oh, it goes Rosie, I choked, I'm so mad, but I won't give up that easy, no, I won't have it. I knew my back's to the ropes, it don't matter, my dancing's dope. I know if I went back to my super flat again, that's when it's back to the lab again, you know, it's all rhapsody, I better go catch this moment, I hope you don't pass me. I thought it would be pretty shallow to judge her whole personality based on the car she chose to drive. But she's beautiful, so that trumped the negative of the alley. We had a drink first, and then went on to our dance lesson. The day was a success, I think. 
We competed together a few weeks later, spent most nights in each other's company, and very quickly we both fell in love. Or no, I did. It might have been a slower process for Rosie. Fast forward to a year later, and my extravagant idea to propose on stage during our second dance competition was all planned out. Rosie had no idea, but I knew we were about to be called up on stage. We were interrupting a busy schedule, so I didn't have a lot of time to carry out my master plan. I was nervous, but on the surface I was calm and ready to drop bombs. But I kept on forgetting what I wrote down, the whole crowd went so loud. I opened my mouth, but because Ivan didn't turn the microphone on, the words don't come out. I'm choking now, everyone's cheering now, the clock's run out, down on my knee, you wouldn't mind me? <laughs> One thing that makes me so happy is that my mum had the chance to meet you. I know she thought the world of you. One of the last things I remember mum saying to me was, make sure you effing marry her. <laughs> she didn't know you long, but she knew you were the woman that I was going to marry. And that would have made us so happy too. Obviously, I'm devastated that she couldn't be here to see me marry the love of my life. But I know she's here with us in spirit, and I'm 100% certain she approves. Thank you all for being here to celebrate the happiest day of my life. It really does mean the world to me. Before I pass the microphone to my best friend and best man Jason, I need to make you aware of something. He doesn't know this, but he's actually on day release from one of the country's top mental institutions. <laughs> Part of his condition is the ability to completely fabricate some amazing stories in his mind. <laughs> sadly, these are just fantasies. But in order to keep him from losing his mind further, we have to play along with these stories and make him think that, they, that we also believe that they are true. He may or may not have a few of these stories to tell you in his speech, but please help him in his condition by believing they are true. <laughs> <laughs> Through my years of struggles and, sad and bad times, I've learned some very valuable lessons, one being that life is very precious. Meeting you, Rosie, has been one of the best things that's ever happened to me, and I promise to try my best to keep myself fit and healthy for as long as I can, so you don't have to look after me in a few years' time. And I promise to never take you for granted, because life is so precious, and sometimes very short. So I will treasure every day with you like it is my last, and love you more and more every day. Can I have a quick toast and a massive cheer for the most beautiful bride, Mrs. Bernie Lee?